Hello and welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett along with Kent Myers and we're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues and this uh, park we're going to talk about today has been open one year now in Tulsa. We're going to get an update from the guy who knows. Yes, uh, Tony Moore is going to be our guest uh, today and we're going to be talking about uh, new adventures at the uh, gathering place here in Tulsa and he was on just about a year ago uh, this month and got us started on talking about the gathering place. We want a one year update. Yeah, we'll get it today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. During my time as Assistant Secretary of the U.S. Department of the Interior, I witnessed a fundamental transformation in the government-to-government -government relationship between tribes and the United States. What I hope is that history has turned a corner with Indian tribes. My name's Kevin Washburn, and I'm a professor of law at the University of New Mexico School of Law, and I'm a Chickasaw. The joy of my life is teaching students, sending them out in the world to help take care of their communities. And federal Indian law is a powerful force for that because the law often is on the tribe's side. My Chickasaw lineage comes from my mother's side of the family. I know she had some rough times, but there's such a tremendous sense of pride now because we have really come a long way since those times. The Chickasaw Nation has always been about helping people to help themselves. And today, it's Chickasaws taking care of Chickasaws. I don't look like a Native American necessarily, but I am a full citizen of the Chickasaw Nation, and I'm very proud of that. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at profilesofanation.com. When I came to work for the ODVA, I started realizing the opportunity to take care of veterans. It's a powerful thing when you realize that you are taking care of people that made history. Working here is a calling. It's really, really important that they don't just come here to exist. We want to give them meaning to their lives. We try to make life happy and meaningful and fulfilled for our veterans. Hello and welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Well, as we talked about in the open, we are really uh, excited to have Tony Moore join us again. He is the executive director of The Gathering Place here in Tulsa. Just a wonderful uh, park with all kinds of uh, exciting activities and attractions. Uh, Tony uh, is a native of Jamaica. He moved to the United States to play soccer and to go to college. Uh, thank goodness he stayed after that and uh, got into the uh, amusement park uh, business with the uh, SeaWorld, starting out in a, a fairly uh, entry-level position but advanced quickly and uh, then progressed up to the parent company Anheuser-Busch uh, and worked with them for a while and thank goodness uh, uh, we were able to get him back to Tulsa. Uh, some folks uh, here in Tulsa did that and he is now uh, running uh, the gathering place uh, with pride. Tony, glad to have you back. Thank you so much for having me again, appreciate it. We had you on about a year ago and the park had just opened then and so everything seemed brand new and um, as we suspected, the accolades have been coming in. So first of all, congratulations thank you, to you thank and you. your staff. Thank you so much. The thank early you. returns are, are very, very <laughs> favorable. Um, Tell us, you know, how would you sum up the first year? Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll just let you take it from there, and then I'll, I'll poke at the questions. You know, it, was, it, it truly has been an exciting year, a rewarding year, um, still a year of unknowns, uh, but we have just learned so much, grown so much, how the park has been received by the community, mm -hmm. and really um, on a national level as well, and, and really bringing a lot of attention to Oklahoma and to Tulsa. And I think people, are, I think, are amazed at the details. Uh, the level of architecture, the level of materials that were used. Uh, I'm sure cost was somewhat a factor. Every project has a budget. But this budget was very high, and the projects used were, were um, you know, of a higher level than, than Oklahomans are typical of seeing. So I, I, can you talk about some of the details that people notice and bring sure. to your attention? Uh, you know, so part of this um, starts with the very origin of the design. Michael Van Valkenburg and Associates out of New York, they do, they're a landscape architect firm and they do awesome work. And then it was well built by Crossland Construction. But I will say um, the attention to detail, 
uh, the design, the collection of um, what we call attraction mix in, in terms of um, the diversity it provides from skate parks to playgrounds to um, kayaking and canoeing to world-class restaurants. It was just well designed and well built, uh, $465 million. Um, that's not typical, the price tag on a, on a public park. And so it's not your traditional public park. It's a hybrid of where a theme park meets a public park. But you make it up on the admission price. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and that's what's so fascinating about this experience. It's all free. And I said it's free because someone gave. And so we're very thankful to the George Kaiser Family Foundation mm -hmm. and the over 90 donors that gave to make this a possibility, to and make it a free experience. And when you have literally millions of people coming in annually now, um, <laughs> there might be some people who haven't been to the park. They might be driving in, be unfamiliar with the area on Riverside Drive. What's parking like? What, what should people be ready to encounter when they get there? So, you know, we're learning a lot about the seasonality of the park as well and the visitation. So I will tell you, spring break, it's, um, we, on a spring break day, we average 20,000 visitors a day. Now that aligns to the major theme parks in Orlando and it felt like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> folks were coming in from a day's drive from, from Arkansas, from Kansas City, from Oklahoma City, from Dallas, um, Houston. And uh, gathering at the gathering, gathering place. at the gathering place, uh, becoming a regional destination. Uh, and so in that sense, parking, you know, we have satellite parking, mm -hmm. parking with 20,000 visitors a day, um, spending an average of about three to four hours. It really yeah. puts um, a very impactful day. But S signage has to be, though, a, an important issue for you, so people aren't confused about what to do. You know, they, fortunately, a lot we get a lot of visitations to our website, so mm -hmm. there was a sense of preparation in, in coming. But yes, just having a lot of employees on the ground in the field uh, assisting with direction and wayfinding, um, but that's what we do mm -hmm. as part of the experience. But a summer day, um, we thought summer would be extremely busy, but due to the heat, the summers were actually not as busy as we thought it would be. Um, for obvious reasons with the Oklahoma heat, uh, once we start getting into the cool of fall weather, then we started to see robust attendance again. So climate is definitely affecting the visitation and, and, and how people are experiencing the park, but wow, the feedback we've gotten from the community, from our visitors, and from the national and international community has been really overwhelming. Well, you've had a year of, of, of interesting and exciting and sometimes uh, traumatic experiences with the flood that we'll talk about in a little bit, but what was the biggest surprise to you uh, coming from the background you came from in the amusement park area and at the highest level coming here to Tulsa? What was the biggest surprise for Tony Moore? There were several. Um, one, the ownership that uh, the community and, and not only Tulsa and Oklahomans um, abroad took in embracing the park. You know, in a, when you're in a destination market, you're there for three or four days and then you leave and you don't have that sense of ownership. But the Oklahomans took tremendous pride in saying this was their park. Um, and that was very refreshing and, and but surprising as well. Um, you know, we int were intentional and wanted a park that would uh, attract a diverse demographic. And we were also intentional with some of the special events and the program that we've had. And we were quite pleased to see a very strong mix in our attendance. Uh, I mentioned earlier the, the regional draw. We, we welcome um, the regional draw. And our friends from Visit uh, Tulsa and Visit Oklahoma Tourism, as you know, is our third largest uh, industry here and so it was very refreshing to see um, the regional draw but a lot of different things that you can't really anticipate attendance uh, we had a soft projection for about a million visitors a year and we ended up with 2.9 and um, tremendously over a forecast yeah. and you can that also has an effect on your budget and on, on different aspects of the business but it just certainly shows mm -hmm. how um, receiving the community and the state was for, for a park like Well you had an, an original staffing expectation how is it how does it look today and how did that evolve? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on paper we thought you know we'll have about 150 employees at peak and um, we were just about 300 employees. Yeah. And so um, a good problem to have, but as mm -hmm. you can also understand, um, we're, uh, there's an endowment that um, oversees our, our daily operation. And so 
where we were budgeted and where we ended up. So we, um, we had to find creative means to manage it in a very fiscal responsible way. And I would think the concessions might have had to been changed somewhat, because I know you kept the prices low. We uh, did. In, in most cases. We did, and I appreciate you noticing that. And, and that was in intentional for an affordable experience. Mm -hmm. So regardless of where you're from in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you can um, come and enjoy the park and have an affordable meal for like five or six dollars. And so we self-operate our, our, our culinary operation in an effort to keep the pricing down. And so uh, we did, in some days, we were able, with, with a free admission, then your admissions become, I'm sorry, your culinary becomes mm -hmm. your number one um, source of revenue. And so with the volume, we, we did fairly well on, on the revenue, but we, we intentionally kept the prices low and affordable. And I know during the summer, you were able to, to bring school children over uh, who might not have had uh, transportation to the park otherwise and figured out a way to get them sure. there. You know, transportation still is and, and, and still is a, a barrier for a lot of folks who are just, just don't have the means of getting to the park. And we haven't figured that out yet, but we've done some busing. Um, we've brought in elementary school kids. We've gone to certain communities and, and bus kids in, but it's by no means um, have we um, checked that box. Um, it's a continual effort and we're still trying to figure that out. Talk about repeat visitors. I imagine <clears throat> you have a higher percentage of repeat visitors than, for instance, the California or Florida theme parks might have. You know, one of the, the benchmark of a, of a great park is repeatability. You know, certainly we didn't want to build a $465 million park and then say, hey, you know, folks are coming and say, hey, it was a nice park, but I'm not sure I'd go back again. Mm -hmm. And so repeatability is huge. And in the, in the attractions business, when you know you have a winning product, because when kids get off a ride and they run back around and get back on again. <laughs> that's what I that, do. That's when you know that's you have, <laughs> indeed, you have a winning product. But um, we are seeing repeat visitations, you know, 3 million visitors in the first year, um, you know there's a certain sense of repeat, repeatability in there. Um, stroller moms, I'll tell you, you can set your clock. At about nine o'clock, you can see the strollers rolling in. Stroller moms, our adventure playground area, is really the number one draw, five acre adventure playground area, which in, in essence could be a theme park all by itself. And around 11.30, uh, when the sun starts to get a little overhead, you can see the, st the convoy of stroller moms starting up and they're starting to exit out. But, um, but certainly, they're repeatable. Um, during the week, it's more for locals, and as we get into our weekends, we get more of the what we call our drive markets coming in on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Well, when we get back, we'll talk about some of the accolades that the park has earned this year, including a major uh, nomination or award or announcement from Time Magazine. It's coming up next on The Verdict. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma loyal to you.
we're back on the verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest today is Tony Moore of The Gathering Place. And as uh, we went to break, I promised we would go over some of the awards that The Gathering Place has earned. And we'll start, uh, I guess, with uh, USA Today. They were the first one to really recognize the park on a national or international basis. Yeah, that was a huge award on our very first. And uh, USA Today voters um, polled what they thought was the number one new attraction in America. And um, for the gathering place to be voted the number one new attraction in the in the U.S. here in Tulsa, here in Oklahoma, was just tremendous for us, and really put us on the map in a manner that we just you couldn't buy. Well, and it's it's not something the state's known for, and so it, I mean it was really a boost for tourism and and the image of the state too. Indeed, uh, National Geographic then came in. The National Geographic voted us on an international level, uh, one of the top 12 mind-bending parks in the world. <laughs> and so again, to be recognized in that, you know, I, I think we, in the last year, more people have Googled a Tulsa than ever before <laughs> yeah. um, as a result of some of uh -huh. these awards. Uh, what were so, some of the other mind-bending parks that, that, that made that? You know, the headline says from Tokyo to Tulsa. Uh -huh. And so there was a park wow. in, in Tokyo. There's a park in Sydney, Australia that was also, there was a few in Asia as well. And just to have Oklahoma and Tulsa as a part of that was just so huge for mm -hmm. us here. Um, urbanists uh, uh, all over the, the country are, are members of the Urban Land Institute, ULI, and they have a national award too, and you were a recipient of that. We were. Um, the ULI award, from an industry point of view, as it impacts sustainability and community impact, uh, was just, um, again, a great award that we were just humbled to have. And, and just, you know, we, we didn't build a park with the intention of getting awards. We built a great park to engage a community that was validated by the industry and by our visitors. And because it came from our visitors and the industry, not because we wanted it to, it was earned. It was just quite humbling and, and very gratifying as well. And then perhaps the most eye-popping award came from Time Magazine. Time Magazine, one of Time Magazine's um, greatest places to visit in the world here in Oklahoma, here in Tulsa. Um, again, more people, the curiosity in, in understanding what this park was about, even from colleagues in the industry in, in saying, you know, here, you know, what, what's this park completely about? And just to have that type of award is just tremendous. Tremendous for, the, for, for a park, tremendous for everyone involved, for our donors, tremendous for the city, tremendous for our state. Let me ask you to look back, <clears throat> not just a year ago, but look back about a year or two years ago. Uh, when you first started thinking about Tulsa and first people started talking to you about Tulsa and going there, did you ever envision uh, the way things would be as they are today? Not at all. You know, I knew we had a great park. I knew it was well funded and I knew it was going to be well built. And uh, but again, you, you can't. Those are the things you have control over how your end user, how your visitor um, engages and experience and feels about your park is just something you just can't can't plan for. Um, we did plan and, and uh, it was just tremendous, tremendous mm -hmm. in how it was received. And yeah, blown away, blown away by it. And uh, our colleagues in the industry uh, to be acknowledged in such a manner here in, in Oklahoma, you know, we knew, we knew we had a good park and our consumers are saying that every day. I knew you'd been affected somewhat by the flooding, but I visited two or three months after the event and I didn't see any signs of it. So did I miss something or were you all just either fortunate or really good at, at bringing it back? If you look really hard, yeah. Mick, you can see it. Uh, we did have some erosion by the river edge um, and some of those areas are closed off, to be quite honest. Um, and they're being repaired as we speak. So yeah, the, the 100 year flood came the first year and um, we, we still have some repairs that were being um, that we're managing right now. So you won't have another one for 99 years? I hope, I hope we're done, I hope that's it, <laughs> and um, we're free for, for 100 years, for 99 years at least. We hadn't really discussed the fact that the park's not completed. No, we're at um, you know, just about 70% of a 100 acre bill, and so um, next year, early next year, we'll start on the 30% with the Children's Museum. Um, the Discover Lab here in town, um, a company KKT is working for the, the Children's Museum. And if you think the Children's Museum is great now, it would be like a Children's Museum on steroids with all <laughs> the educational and fun and play activities that they have planned. And so yes, the, the, the complex of the gathering place will continue to grow um, to full capacity of 100 acres. And it's an exciting time. And when do you think that will be completed? 
Well, I'm going to be on the construction um, next year, awesome. early next year, um, 2020, and um, not quite sure of the date, but it's, it's an aggressive window. Let's focus on a few attractions uh, individually. Talk to us about the uh, Chapman Adventure Playground. You know, the Chapman Adventure Playground is probably our number one draw. It's a five acre adventure playground broken up into seven different realms um, for kids from toddlers to around age 12. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I could put turnstiles on this uh, playground <laughs> and charge admission and, and be right in the, the paid experience, but an awesome gift. And that's where stroller moms and kids play with um, six towers. We have over a dozen slides. Uh, elephants, uh, zip line, by the way, our number one attraction mm -hmm. in the park is a zip line attraction. And we'll have just, to go do that. Yeah. Adults <laughs> and, and, and children <laughs> welcome. And so, yes, it's just, it's, it's what defines a park in, in, in many ways. What about the uh, Williams Lodge? So the Williams Lodge, if you have not seen this, it's like a ski lodge on steroids. Um, the aesthetics when you walk in with the meandering ceiling of five different woods that curves and bends and twists and the floor, Oklahoma sandstone called Wild Horse. Um, it's just the texture that you'll see in the floor. Very expensive floor, but very, very elegant in how it fuses with the wood. And it's just a place to gather and do nothing. I mean, the furnishing in there is just overwhelming. A company out of Atlanta, MSME, did the furnishings, and it feels like a living room that you would be, you don't want to leave. And so folks use it for so many different reasons. We have the crochet club, the knitting club, the card club, homeschool. Uh, the college kids are there checking their social media. It's just a very awesome place to enjoy and spend some time. Approximately what kind of square footage is in the house? Ah, uh, the square footage is, um, I'm going to butcher that, but I would say it's somewhere around over 2,000 square feet. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's divided in three different um, levels. Um, you have the, the, the gathering room, and then you have the parlor, and then we have a solarium, which is like a, a meeting space that has a, a table that can be configured in like seven different um, configurations for different use. Just a great place. And the vistas looking out from the window is just beautiful. You can truly see the park from there. Talk about the One Oak Boathouse. So the Boathouse boat um, is probably our most striking, iconic image of the park. Um, the roof line um, just has over 84 different pieces of um, bulletproof fiberglasses that are aligned with a lot of angles. And the visual of it, when it's lit from the underbelly at night, is just stunning. And then, but there's the Boathouse has the Vista Restaurant, and if you have not been there, um, it, it looks like a, a, a high-end dining experience, what we call it elevated casual dining. And so it's a very, um, thus the name Vista, because once you look out from the, from the floor to ceiling glass, you can see so much of the park and enjoy the vistas. You can see the Arkansas River flowing by and over, um, part of over, um, um, we have 1.2 million plants and shrubs that's visible as you sit there. So awesome place to dine. Um, you can walk up, you can, if you're in the park, or you can come for dining. But we also have a boathouse, um, a level one that we do a lot of programming, s STEAM education with children, with um, some of our local schools. We have a partnership with the Tulsa County City Library. A um, lot of programming in those spaces that we do from a wide range of activities. And don't forget, the boathouse has boats and canoes <laughs> and kayaks. <laughs> and so for free, you can kayak the, the, the three-acre Peggy's Pond and enjoy um, a very tranquil um, tour of our, of our pond. And uh, Oklahoma City has opened a park, and I know that you're working on uh, doing some uh, some sort of relationship. Yeah, we're so excited, and, and congratulations to Maureen and, and her team at Scissor Toe Park in Oklahoma City. They now have a world-class park. So the state of Oklahoma has two world-class parks separated by a highway. <laughs> and so uh, we're hoping that we'll hold hands together, and this will ultimately be a draw for the state of Oklahoma, where folks can come and visit two world-class parks. And you can go, we'll hope at some point we'll have programming or some shared experience between the two parks. But yeah, very excited for Maureen and, and her, her team in Oklahoma City. And um, we're looking forward to having some partnerships with them as well. Well, congratulations and thanks for coming back. Yeah, Thank you so, so much. very much right. for inviting me back and allowing me to, to talk about, obviously we're so passionate and, and, and happy about our park here in Tulsa. Tony Moore with The Gathering Place. Kent and I'll be back with a final word after this.
It used to be okay in hospitals. It used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay. Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. I really think people are so unaware of the number of kids waiting just in Oklahoma. And I think if more people knew that those children were out there waiting, you know, I think that just by the way we live our lives and the people we talk to, that, that maybe we can help encourage adoption from Oklahoma. You will always be mom and dad to me. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Our guest today was Tony Moore of The Gathering Place. Yeah, Tony really uh, uh, explains the park well, is a great ambassador for the park, and uh, is to be congratulated along with mm -hmm. all of his staff and all of the folks that funded that enterprise. And it's just a great advancement for the, for the state mm -hmm. as well as uh, Tulsa. He rightly mentioned, uh, you know, all of the, the national accolades and the fact that you, generally, historically, we've not thought of our parks as tourism opportunities. Yeah. But boy, with, uh, with the gathering place uh, receiving these worldwide accolades, it's certainly going to be. Uh, I mean, millions of visitors are going to be visiting Oklahoma. Over well, the they, next few they years. are. Yeah. Already. Yeah, that's right. They're coming from all over. But I mean, people yeah. are flying in to see this place. And, uh, you know, people that are going to do that probably have a little discretionary income to spend when they're here. Probably not the only yeah. thing they're going to do. We got some websites for you the gathering place, I'm sorry, gatheringplace.org. And then we have a website, theverdict.tv. We'll see you next week. Thank you.